Okay, I'm playing around with the heat kit. 230. It's got an 8873 tube. And I've got the tube pulled out. This unit doesn't work. Here's the heater 5 and 6. That's the two brown wires. Pin 4 here goes to this capacitor here, which looks like, looks like it's over here to this network on the control grid. This point oh two here is the cathode. That capacitor here is this. This 100 ohm resistor here, which is on the RF input during transmit, is this big block right here. So if I go through here and check with ohms, I can go across. There's about 107 ohms. It's just a big bank of carbon resistors because it's going to dissipate some heat. So the input is going into this cathode here from your exciter, your driving transmitter. And it's got 100 ohms here to ground. Just it's got some type of load. RFN. Then there's a Zener diode that's on the back here. And there's a fuse. Three fourths of inch, I believe it's slow blow. That's the fuse right here. This is supposed to be 8.2 volts, and the circle on the schematic means uh, when you have a plate current of 500 mils with a box around it, that means that no load, quarter of a milliamp, and that's the high voltage here on the plate, which is to this portion of the tube. And I got some junk falling over here. Look, the schematic is over here. Here's the tube plate. High voltage is over here. 1900 with load. 2500 no load DC. That's what Heath kit use the circle and the square for loaded and unloaded. This is the DC it's fit into the anode here which is the top of the tube. That's all high voltage stuff and lock in your butt. This is all turned off and discharged. It's coupled through a cap, the tune. This is the output. Input, this is the relay back and forth. There's this 100 ohm, 300 watt resistor. This is big bank of resistors right here. On this particular unit here, the unit uh, tube isn't working, so I think, so I'm pulling this off and I'm going to go through and later on I'm going to ohm this out just to see if there's any shorts or something. But I want to do it completely out of the circuit. 8873, date code 7432. This tube is pretty darn heavy. Feels like a... Uh, it's about the size, a little bit bigger than a golf ball, but this thing is one heavy darn tube. Feels like you got a two or three uh, lug nuts off a giant truck or something. Tube over here you've got eight, nine, ten, two, three, and two. All that's the cathode. What's weird about this is that this ended up screwing up another radio. This is all loose and can be here in the socket. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Got it flipped over. What I did is undid 
these two screws a little bit which is this is the clamp it's on there it's got a little looks like a piece of delrin or something that pushes against it that's the block now that's the block you're not supposed to sit there and machine or anything because it's poisonous but just as is it's benign so it's got some heat sink goop on it and the clamp that's on there there's a solder joint that's bad on there so that might be a problem this with the little clip there that's for the plate the anode the high voltage these are the two beads there's the feed through cap so it's got high voltage but I pulled the tube out just to check to see if uh, we got some shorts in the tube or something again there's the zener that's the fuse for the zener you've got an input output input is an RCA relay ALC the relay on this particular unit it's got a uh, soft relay on there supposedly that um, doesn't fry a solid state rig when it's working right uh, this unit here has got some issues so totally unknown so that's why I'm taking apart just to check out now over here on this there's a turn that's off but that ohms out So it's just got a loose turn that's the uh, enamels come off, but that ohms out. Okay, ohming this out, I can't find anything that's shorted just with the stupid continuity test. Over here, the control grid's 4711 on this tube. That connects to the outer ring. You can see pins 11, 4, and 7 have the actual pieces here. Right. Uh, that's pin 11. Connects to this, which connects to this ring. That's the control grid. Also connects over here to 7 over here to four and that down in there is the band that's on there and it might be that that's just a bad solder joint was undone and that's what the problem is maybe if I'm lucky but I just went through and used a dumb ohmmeter to make sure there's nothing just physically touching inside the tube um, and you got wide open between all the different the heater the control grid plates and everything so I don't have any dead shorts on anything this is a pretty rare tube now looking from here it looks like that band really doesn't hook up to anything there's nothing hooked up to this nor is it something hooked up to here either. That might just be mechanically a thing that holds the tube. But pin four, five, six, seven, and eleven are all tied together right here. Connect up through this resistor. Four seven eleven control grid also here to the ring so there's nothing here connecting up to this nor here four five six seven and eleven so Looks at least on this radio that this not being connected, this is not electrically connected to anything in the bottom, nor is this feed through. It's just a band on the tube, but it's not connected 
um, to anything below. It is through the pins, but it's just because it's connected on the tube itself. This is the thermal clicks on in series. Okay, these are actually capacitors right here and then over there. They connect up to the ring to ground, probably for uh, oscillations or something at higher frequencies if I had to guess. So those are those capacitors 31 and 23. They're not just standoffs, they're actually point. 001 microfarads. Got the color code of red, black, red. This ring really wasn't. This was unsoldered on this uh, swap meet old radio. And the band wasn't tight at all, it was as loose as can be. In fact, it's almost about ready to touch the beryllium copper block. A beryllium block again that's swap meat radio there's the socket I just playing around here this I'm at the resolder this on this is the feeds the top all right this stuff's kind of that's the Ferrite beads, light coil. This is red coil over there. So this, uh oh, that capacitor and the other one. here this particular radio this was loose it wasn't even like this was sort of tight it was just this ring was loose as can be probably would work at a lower frequency high you might have some oscillations might be somebody replaced the tube once and didn't put it back on or they just didn't build it to begin with right Let's get soldered back on here. Okay, my radio was wired up like this, where the DC that powers the anode is through the choke, through the ferrite beads, and then to the tuning cap, they have a wire through here. And then add a service bulletin that connected this wire actually went directly from here to the top of the cap to uh, make it work higher output, I believe, at 10 meters. So they tied the anode of the tube directly to this. And so this is not here. Okay, the rig I had is a serial number 440 something. And then the high voltage got the inductor, got the ferrite beads, feeds the anode top of the tube and then it connects the RF choke directly to uh, the tune cap cap fixed cap that connects up to the tuning plates and then in this manual over here they've shown where they've got it connected from the tube directly over and I believe that configuration is better for 10 meters DTL 29 F 29 and then I went ahead and Google searched and found this service bulletin. It's on Puck, neither net, whatever. Hey, remove wire up check coupling, 14 gauge, blah, 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 blah. So February 75. My tube is from 74, so it doesn't have that mod evidently.